In this very quick introduction video, I will show you what parametric sketching in programs like Fusion 360 means in contrast to static sketches you used to, to create in AutoCAD when you do not use the parametric options there, or for example, the way how you work in SketchUp. Before we get started, make sure that you see the timeline at the bottom. In case you do not see the timeline, like this, go to this component icon, right click, and then select Capture Design History. Perfect. In SketchUp or in AutoCAD, you can simply start the drawing wherever you want. However, in parametric programs, we have to create a sketch. Think about the sketch as a container. To create a sketch container, you can use the sketch icon. Or you can actually, when you're not inside the sketch, also start drawing somewhere and then actually the software automatically will create a sketch container for you. But it's good practice when you new to select the create sketch. Once you selected it, you will see th those three yellow planes and they basically give you orientations of how the sketch will be positioned. So for example, a flat sketch on the ground along X and Y a vertical sketch along Z and X or Z and Y. And this is basically all, all relating to the different views as you can see. Okay, so I will select the uh, ground plane. And let's go to here. And then once you clicked, you are inside the sketch edit mode. So you created a sketch container and now we can start drawing. So for example, on the right side, you see a new palette with some options. I will go into those in further videos more in detail. But for example, here we have the grids and the snapping. You can turn this on and off. Here we have constraints, how elements should relate to each other. So for example, coincident, collinear, uh, concentric, so center of uh, a circle, midpoint on a line, lines should be parallel, perpendicular, etc, etc. And up here inside the sketch menu, there you see all the different drawing tools, the line, different rectangle ways, so lower point, upper point, three point, center to a corner point, rectangle, circles, arcs, polygon, ellipse, and spline, and some other basic tools, for example, to break, extend, trim, or fill it, an offset sketch. So you see most of these commands, when you know AutoCAD, you actually find here. Essentially, this is really the way how you work in, in AutoCAD, with just a specific focus on only creating parametric interactive sketches. Before we start drawing, I would like to show you where the grid snapping system is. So there we can turn snap to grid on and off. You also see up here, it's the same function. And then grid settings. Now with adaptive, that basically means when you zoom out with the mouse wheel, the grid updates. If you zoom in with the mouse wheel, the grid gets finer. So based on your distance, it shows you a more appropriate grid. This is actually very helpful when you work with metric because then it switches between the, the different views nicely. And also when you work in, in a smaller detail, you zoom in, then your grid gets finer. And if you work on something bigger and you zoom out, your grid gets coarser. Fixed basically means, well, as it says, we can define the bigger block of a grid and then how many subdivisions there will be. And that's basically then it doesn't get any finer. And as I said, I personally prefer the adaptive. So to draw a line, I'll go to the line tool. Let's zoom in a little bit. Move the mouse cursor somewhere to the grid and you see it snaps to the grid. So let's click. And then drag the mouse a little bit away. Don't click again. So we're still drawing the line. And let's take a look at what we have. First, you see there is a dimension that reads out that this line is 0 0.805 inches long and 67 degrees rotated down. So for those who are used to just 
uh, define where a line starts and then type in the length and type in the degree. That's what you can do. Similar to the way basically how uh, people are used to do drafting in AutoCAD. I work a little bit different with Fusion because all those relationships we actually later will establish with the constraints. Okay, so let's move the mouse to here. So this line is actually perfectly horizontal because there is something I would like to show you. You see to the left of my mouse there is now an icon, two horizontal lines with three angled lines. And the moment the line is not horizontal anymore, you don't see that icon. And you see a similar icon when the line is perfectly vertical. That's actually Fusion telling you that currently the line is vertical, so it thinks you want to have a vertical constraint or horizontal constraint. What these constraints will do, I will show you just in a minute. So let's make this line go straight down, click, and now we can draw another line perfectly horizontal. And you see that there's actually a different icon popping up in the corner. So there, and this is actually the perpendicular constraint. So the white line, would, in case I would click now, would be constrained perpendicular or 90 degree to the first line I created. So let's click and click and click. And now you can, with the mouse, move uh, onto this round icon here with the check mark. Or, for example, we can press escape. And then you left, actually, the active drawing tool. And we're still inside the sketch editing mode, because you see here there's a button, stop sketch. So I mentioned before I'm, I'm going to show you the focus of fusion being parametric that we create interactive sketches. So what does that actually mean interactive sketches? Currently we have four lines. We can for example select this point and move it. We can select this point and, and move it. So click and drag. And you see that this line actually remains horizontal. While when I move this point these lines change their rotation. So why is that this way? And it's because this line is set via this constraint to be 90 degree perpendicular to this line. And this line is set because of this constraint to be vertical. So I can never rotate this line. If, for example, I select this con con uh, constraint and delete it, and I move this point, you see this line starts to rotate. If I move this point, you see these other two lines rotate because this, the sketch solver tries to basically figure out how the sketch should behave based on the rules we established. And the only rule we currently have is that these two lines are perpendicular to each other. So the difficulty for the software is to figure out, or actually a better term would be to predict how you want the sketch to, to behave. So we have to establish clear rules which are easy for the software to understand. So let's actually delete this one. And let's say we would like to create a sketch and that looks like a rectangle and is nicely positioned on the grid with the lines vertical and horizontal. So, for example, this point, we can move to this point. See now actually everything is filled. So this is now a closed sketch. This is something you need to see this fill because this is now a surface which we later can extrude into a three-dimensional object. Now all these points, for example, we can drag to grid points. So we have something that to us, to our eye, look or eyes looks like two vertical and two horizontal lines. But for the software, it simply sees uh, four lines which have no constraint. There's no relationship established. So in the next step, I would like to show you multiple ways how we could 
establish the rules or the relationships so that the lines are, which should be vertical will be understood as to be vertical and horizontals will be horizontals. Obviously, the easiest one would be to use the horizontal and vertical constraint on all those four parts. This is something I do a lot. I find this actually very easy and convenient to use and it makes sense. Now this way, this edge and this edge because of these two constraints, they are set to be uh, vertical and these two edges, they are set to be horizontal. Okay, now let me show you a different way. I could also say this one to this one perpendicular, this one to this one perpendicular, this one to this one perpendicular. These two I cannot constrain anymore. You will get a small warning and that is uh, quite logical because this line is in a relationship to this, this to this, this to this. And because they're all, this is 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree, but if you're a rectangle we only have uh, four corners and if three are 90 degree then the fourth corner has to be 90 degree anyway so we don't need an extra constraint. Okay so everything looks okay however if I select to one point and move it ooh, <laughs> you see this stuff happening. What do you see? Uh, all these lines are still nicely in a 90 degree relationship so I move this around, but I can yeah, kind of like rotate them, which is not really ideal. So I could say, well, this line I simply set to be horizontal, dang, because this line has to be horizontal. This line will be made 90 degree to this line. And because this is horizontal, this has to be vertical because this is vertical and this line is 90 degree to this line. This one will be horizontal. So you see there is a, a particular logic behind these constraints. They only establish rules. I could, for example, also say this is horizontal, this is vertical, and here's a parallel tool. Uh, so basically I could say this line, please be parallel to this line. Okay. So I can, for example, move this point up and you see I cannot rotate this line because this line has to be parallel to this line and because this line has a horizontal, sorry, a vertical constraint, this line will be vertical, thus through the parallel constraint this one will be vertical as well. If I now add here a parallel to this one, then this line will always be parallel to this line. And because I made this line horizontal, this line will always be horizontal. So that's, for example, also a way. But the problem is in, in this situation on this single line, I have already two constraint icons. It makes it a little bit more confused. So you always want to try to have very easy to read and to manipulate sketches. I can, for example, press D or start the sketch dimension. And with this one, I can establish an angle between two lines. So this is similar to the perpendicular constraint. Also here, I will get now a warning that this constraint is uh, not possible because I over constrain the sketch, but it actually tells me that I can add a driven dimension. And let's say okay, so you see there it reads 90. And again, three corners are 90, the fourth has to be 90. But also here, if I move this one, you see it deforms, not in a way I want. Because, because the software tries to figure out what I'm trying to do. Uh, so the sketch starts to deform kind of like, um, like jello. If you just smack it, it starts to jiggle. So since we are working here with uh, dimensions, so obviously a dimension does not necessarily only um, have to be limited to the length or the distance between two lines. 
and we can also dimension the angle between two lines. I can, for example, go ahead and type in 80. And you see now this line to this line is 80 degrees and this line to this line is 90 degrees. And you see this one reads out now 100. So double clicking on this again, when I type in 110, it deforms it this way. So I hope that at this point you start understanding what this whole idea of constraining a sketch basically means. And because interface-wise, those angles occupy a lot of space, they're kind of distracting. So in our case, all we really need is just to create horizontal and vertical constraints on the lines. You see four icons added, not very confusing. There's not too much added to a line, so multiple constraints. This is nice and, and simple, easy to manipulate. And the simpler a sketch can be, the more predictable the manipulation will be. So how do we dimension the sketch? And then how do we position, for example, the this rectangular shape perfectly on the center of our sketch. And you see we have the y and the x-axis and here is the world zero point. And that, for example, we can do with dimensions easily. So sketch dimension. If I click on a line, I can pull out the dimension for the length of a line. I can also double click a dimension with a mouse and type in two because I'm in inches. This is now two inches. It's going to be a pretty big table. I can go to here, click on this one and say, well, this one maybe should be three. So you see, that is actually one of the main reasons why I do not work the way how uh, most people operate with AutoCAD. You just, or if some, somebody does it, you just type all the length and dimensions in first. I roughly do my sketch and then I start adding all the dimensions and figure out how to stabilize the sketch. So this dimension I added is actually working on the length of this line. I can, just so you understand the differences, also say the distance between this line and this line I would like to dimension. So instead of saying this line is three inches, I say that the distance between those two lines is three inches, which makes this line automatically be three inches as well. So different ways, exactly the same result. I could also say these two points are three inches apart from each other. Let's use this line. Okay, perfect. Good. Now I can set this to four and you see I am totally free updating this. This is basically what parametric modeling is about. You create something and then you add uh, functions to it and the functions you can add it specifically for dimension and positioning. So how do we now position actually the sketch? Well, the center of the world can be, or the sketch can be used as a reference point as well. So I can, for example, click on this point, then I click on this line, and then I pull out a dimension for the distance between this point and this point. Now this is a table. A table in this case let's say is a very symmetrical object so it makes sense to plan ahead and draw everything inside my design nicely centered in the world because then I can work with the left, the right side to mirror, the front and the back side to mirror. And here this is now a pretty nice trick by the way when you move the mouse on it and you let it rest you see there are small pop-ups coming up so this is d15 this is d18 and d19 and d stands for dimension so when i double click it i can go with my mouse to here and say the distance of this dimension should be the value of 
dimension 18. And then I type in divided by 2 because I want to have half of 3. Press enter. And now you see there fx 1.5. Uh, so when I go to here and type in 4, you see now this is 2. So a dimension can make use of another dimension and then you can add basic mathematical uh, formulas or calculations to it. Because this line and this line I would like to perfectly center it along this point. So basically from here to this point has to be half of this dimension. So I can select this edge, select this point, drag out the dimension with the mouse, double click on it, click on this dimension and type in divided by two, press enter and there we are. So if I now say three and five, you see I adjust my sketch. All the lines remain horizontal. I can adjust the length and the width and the sketch always because of these inner dimensions will remain perfectly centered in my world. So you see there's a little bit of upfront work to set up the sketch, but afterwards you're incredibly fast at doing design adjustments. And this is basically everything for the introduction into what parametric sketching means. To exit the sketch, we can click on stop sketch. And now you see here in the browser, we have a new folder with a sketch. We can double click the sketch. Then for example, you see you go back into the edit mode. We can go to here, double click, it goes to edit mode. We can also right click and say rename. We can also go here, right click and say rename. For example, let's say tabletop mini, press enter. So we can name also these objects. You can go and say edit sketch and stop. And another very interesting thing is let's maybe do this and then we bring this video to an end. I clicked on this extrude. I select this filled area and then you see I can pull this out. Maybe 0.25. Okay. Now we made a small block. You see in the timeline we made first a sketch and then we created an, a cube or an extrusion based on that sketch. The sketch currently is invisible so I actually turn visibility back on. And let's say now I would like to adjust this extrusion. Uh, so I, maybe I want to change the dimension because extrusion is based on the sketch. I would have to go into the sketch. Okay, I can adjust the width for example, but I don't really see my 3D object anymore. Because what happens is, this is something you need to understand with the timeline, the sketch was created before the cube. So when I added the sketch, see there's a time marker, kind of like time-wise we go a step backwards. The cube doesn't exist yet. Now we can adjust the sketch, we exit the edit mode, and then the software uh, re-extrudes the shape. But this is not necessarily very convenient when I go into edit sketch and then I don't see the rest. Uh, so I can adjust the value and hope that I put in the correct value. So what we can do instead to make this more dynamic, right mouse button click onto the sketch icon and then say show dimensions. And you see now there are all these dimensions and I can actually now adjust all these dimensions without getting into the sketch edit mode. So now I can have a wooden board that is six inches or eight inches or three inches. Okay, and that's basically it for the introduction into the parametric sketching, how the constraints work, how you get into the sketch mode and how you exit the sketch mode, and then a quick intro 
why this is so important and then we can create parametric geometry objects which are driven by those sketches and then how we can also outside the sketch edit mode adjust those sketches to parametrically drive our 3D objects.